Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to episode number 6 of my Transport Fever series here on the Orkney Islands. Before we get into today's episode, let's start off by looking at some maps. As we can see here from the last episode, things have changed quite a bit. We've added some new routes down in the south of the Orkney Islands between the towns of Bury and St Margaret's Hope. I want to try and expand on that this episode and I think we should be able to do so and I also want to try and expand our new crude oil fuel route down there as well because I think that'll be very very profitable indeed. We've also made some connections over to Eddie, I want to continue to expand that and connect that up from the other side now, probably from Brunion or Egglesey, I'm unsure yet though, I'll work that out in the episodes and then if we can get anything else done that would be a great bonus. Let's jump into some gameplay. So we start this episode with a bit of a time lapse and we're going to be building roads. Why do I want to build roads? I'll come on to that in a second but I just very quickly want to touch on the title of this video and it's called the Highways Act. Now what is the Highways Act you might ask? It's basically the legislation for the roads in the United Kingdom and it sets the rules and laws of which drivers and people on the roads should follow. Quite simple. Now there's been many versions of this, I believe the last was in 1980, but the most early is 1835 and I want to bring you an interesting fact from this. So one of the rules in 1835 was quitting his cart or leaving control of the horse or leaving the cart so to be an obstruction on the highway is illegal. And that makes a lot of sense. You have to think back to the time period though of this, 1835. And actually, if you think about this game as well, if you were to start a game at the earliest stage, which in Transport Fever is 1850, there's really no vehicles. It is really all horse and carts. And we started this Orkney Island series in 1900. There was barely automobiles. We had a few cars on the road. We had very, very basic buses. Those were horse-drawn, I believe, actually, to start with. So... You can just tell really that the legislation back then, it is sort of really interesting to look back at and see how we have progressed. There's not any horse and carts in my series at all. I don't really enjoy going back to 1850 too much in this game because stuff is really, really slow. But we're at about, what, 1950 now? 1950 was a really interesting time because it was just after World War II and a lot of countries, the United Kingdom, the United States, they were very much emerging and growing very rapidly and the automobile was definitely a major part of that and we can definitely start to see that in our map right now. We're starting to see a lot more vehicles on the roads and this therefore is causing us a lot of traffic, especially because all of our roads are single lane and a lot of them are city roads as well. So what I've done is I've decided to go and start laying lots of roads. Now, I don't have a lot of money, but roads really don't cost a lot of money either, especially on my very, very flat map. So what I decided to do was to create lots of four-lane highways and start connecting up towns much better. Genuinely, what I've done as well is if an island has one or more town, for example, Surin and Renayan or Grobster and Whitehall, then what I've done is I've surrounded those towns and I've connected them up better and sort of meant that I'm not also relying on one single road between them just so I can try and break things down, give alternate routes, and actually give public transport a bit of a faster access way into towns. One thing I am noticing though is that public transport is maybe starting to suffer a bit now that there's a lot more cars on the road, and that is something that we'll definitely look at in this episode. I am quite wary of it, and what I've also done, as you can see in the background, is because I'm expecting towns to grow out to these new roads, I'm making sure that I'm pre-building lots of new roads, but also reserving some railway track as well. I built a railway line, I'm not necessarily going to put a train on it this episode, I'll have a look into that. But what I wanted to do was make sure that there's a railway line there, so when I actually do come to build it, it's not going to cost me a massive amount of money. I managed to get it on the cheap right now, and that is good. Of course it might change, of course we might add new train stations in as the two towns grow. I do expect Brunein and Soren to eventually become one mega city, which will be very interesting to deal with. The good thing is about these roads that I have built is that I'm expecting much more goods infrastructure to be on the move shortly. I'm starting to focus a bit more on goods and in this episode I hope to add in one or two more goods routes as well. Especially when we touch the mainland though, that's going to be the real curveball and when we do get there, which will hopefully be in a few episodes time, and again I'll also touch on that in this episode, I am expecting much more vehicles on the roads. 
Anyway, let's get into today's live gameplay. Well, hello there ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's live gameplay in episode number 6. We start in the town of Eddie, it has grown quite considerably up to a population of 213. One thing I have thought of since you have seen the, I guess, introduction, the Highways Act, why am I not doing something similar on islands which only have one town? Well, really, the justification was I wanted to try and include roads in towns where two towns are either going to merge together on one island or they're quite close. We've done it here with Surin and Brunayan because eventually I expect this whole area to be filled up. That's also why I pre-laid the railway line because I do expect this to overflow and surround this whole area. So I think I'm just really pre-building for the future there. Additionally, I think that it's going to really traffic is going to be a massive it's, it's just going to be a massive problem you can start to see now already just take this junction for example randomly chose it and just flown in on it there's already a lot of vehicles now in the game we're up to 1944 things are really really ticking and i'm expecting things to get even busier we need to keep up with the transport demand which we're not too far away from to be fair we are making a decent amount of money now though and we'll go over that today and try and optimise some routes. You can see in the background we have a train depot though, and that is something which I want to start with. Do I want to build a train line? Maybe, maybe not. I want to see what trains we really have. I've got a very basic line here just going from the south of Soren to the, I guess, east side of Brunein. We've also got another station at the west side of Brunein. Problem is the terrain here, the terrain it's actually, we're on quite a big hill here, you can't even see Surin. So what I would actually have to do is build underground to get out, and that would cost me a bit too much money. All in all it probably cost me about, yeah, around about a million I expect it to cost. Right now I just don't have that sort of money, because again I don't know what demand we're really going to have. And because the two, I mean this station is quite central, the Brunei Exchange but I still don't expect it to be too popular. If we were to go and start running train services here, we'd have to have a bus and train combination. Let's have a look at the trains though. So we're in 1944 and we've got quite a variety now, which is good. People were asking what locomotive and wagon combination I was using when I did an unsuccessful trial on this route or connecting up Brunei and Soren before. I was using this locomotive here, the A35, running cost of 412,000 a year, top speed of 62. At the time, my track limitation was just a standard at 75 miles per hour, I believe, all in all. So that was the best locomotive cost and speed wise, I guess you could say. And then with wagons, it was the three axle car here, so a running cost of 92,000 all in all. That meant that, say for example, we had a train of five carriages carrying 70 people in total. I would have a running cost of 500,000 here for the wagons, and then locomotive would be costing 400,000. So it was 900,000 on a train, which wasn't necessarily doing great. If I was to do the same now, I'd be really tempted to go and try the electric train, just because the electric train is very cheap. It's got a not bad running cost for what it's worth, but 1.7 million really isn't a lot at all. Then if we have a look at the... I mean, the good thing is with the electric trains, that can go up to 78 miles per hour, so we can get the fast railway out for that. I just feel it would be too much for me to invest in a locomotive right now, so I'm not going to do it. I'm hoping for a new unlock shortly, really, at the back of my mind. And if that comes along and gives us a good train, then I'd be really happy to go and implement it. Again, thinking about goods over here, I would maybe like to if we can get more demand in these cities. Another reason, I guess, why I built these roads around the town is to try get them to grow a bit more faster. If they're seeing there's already infrastructure there, then I think the AI does maybe grow slightly faster. If people can move around easier as well and spread out, then that's always a plus as well. So I'm just hoping that this maybe helps grow a few towns a bit quicker. Population of Grobson is up at 443, and it is really growing out in all directions, which is nice to see. 
What I want to do though is I want to jump away from here. We're going to come back and we're going to look at demand. We're going to look at everything else later on in this episode. But I did say in the last episode I want to connect up a few more towns and I really do want to focus on that. So my two priorities really are St Mary's and also Cleet this episode. Previously we built the roads down to Cleet and it is quite flat again down this part of the world. This whole place is really really flat which is nice it made the road building very very cheap however the big concern that we do have is the distance the distance between these two towns is quite long especially when you compare it to i can basically get from st mary's to st margaret's and the same distance i can get from st margaret's to cleats based on my camera there so this route might be a little bit more difficult to go and make profitable, especially with Cleet being at the end of the line and it only having a population of 84. So we're probably going to start off with smaller buses and less frequent. Let's have a look at the town here though. I've gone ahead and added in one or two roads to sort of make this layout. And we've got bus stops spread around the town. I do think the town is ready to grow quite quickly. As we can see at this part here, there's already some new construction and new roads and same at this part here. I think with the new road connection it is helping, there are some cars going up and down it. I mean don't get me wrong, there's not many but there's one or two along here and I suppose we're not too far away from the fuel depot or oil refinery I should say as well. Speaking of that, we should probably give that route some more trucks as well. I already have given it a few off camera actually. I'm pretty sure that route's doing quite well, so yeah it's our most profitable route. I think I added in about five more trucks, doubling its capacity, and it's up at 231,000. So that is actually our most profitable road route right now after our crude oil route in Grobster. Oil, funnily enough, always being very profitable, and I'm not surprised at that one at all. Okay, so let's jump away from that and let's actually create our new bus routes. What I want to do around St. Margaret's is for our bus up to Bury, we're going one way around the town. I'm just going to do the reverse and go the other way around the town. So let's get our line manager here and let's start at London Road and make our way around the bus stops. I might modify this at a later stage and if we stop at Springfield Road, then it's the long journey down across the map right down to Cleet. Around Cleet itself, that should definitely help Cleet out. And then if we come back into Springfield Road, and that is that route complete. So there we have it. There is our Cleet to St. Mary's route named. As Cleet is quite small, and as I said earlier on, I do want to start off with a post bus. We actually have the Sauer to share buses now, which is interesting. And that could definitely be some upgrades on the main, or I say mainland, I always think right now, because I've not touched the mainland, my main area, my capital is sort of like Surin and Brunei, just because they're probably the most built up areas in the map. Very much in all my other series, wherever I've started, that tends to be the biggest town, just because it's the most connected. But it probably won't be in this case, actually. Things will flip. I do expect towns like Kirkwall and Stromness on the mainland, when they get connected, to thrive and do absolutely phenomenal. But we're not quite there yet. Let's have a look at the speeds first of all. So I'm having a look. The Souder 2 share can go 31 miles an hour, which is really fast. Daimler's got a speed of 22 and then post bus 16. I'm maybe going to go for one Daimler. I think I might do a mixed fleet here actually. I'm going to get that bus out and get it going. And then maybe let's just go for four Daimlers actually. I maybe think that's the best bet. So that bus has gone off. I just don't want all the buses, you know, to be all scrunched up together, which is probably naturally going to happen. So that bus is now left and it's making its long, long journey all the way to Cleet. I can imagine that we're going to need to have a lot of buses to have a good frequency on this route. Hence why I don't want to overdo it with capacity. We need more services really to make things profitable. Anyway, with those away, we can turn our attention now to Buddy and St. Margaret's. Now, these are these two towns in real life, should I say, are connected by roads because there is a land crossing. However, the problem we have is this little thing here and also this ridge. These ridges are very, very small, meaning I don't think we're really going to be able to not build a bridge, even though there isn't a bridge there in real life. We can do some smart trickery along here. It might cost me a little bit, but we should be okay. And if we build along here, 
64,000, 49,000, that's quite a lot for that small section. This is where things, I think, are going to have to turn into a bridge, and they definitely are going to have to turn into a bridge. Can we be smart here? So if we do something like that, that costs 79,000, and that's basically following the land. I don't really have too much other choice here, to be honest. The difficult thing is probably going to be coming round here. Are we going to be able to get round here? I think we might just be able to, actually. I mean, it's not the most elegant, but I think we will be able to... That actually works out okay. Now, if we come down there, and then this is trying to be smart, and it's really just cost me a lot more money here with the land terraforming. Connect that into there, that's perfect. So now that's the difficult part over, really. We can just connect these two up together. And we've got another issue there. Not surprised, this little bit... Come on. There we go, perfect. And running into there, and then finally connecting up here into St. Mary's. So we can definitely have two connections. I can afford to get rid of a building now, because we actually have a bit of money, and we're making money as well, so I really can't complain at all. We can actually turn this game off times three speed. It's nice to see green, for example. 1945, we spent a bit of money on vehicles, we spent a bit of money on roads, yet we still made a profit. It's great. And we're not really cheating. I mean, we are doing things differently, yes, but we're not we're not cheating. We've still got a loan. I'm still keeping track of it. I'm just not paying interest on it. And I've already paid enough interest, so I think that's only fair. Anyway, so Burry, Burry is quite well connected as it is. There is a new part of town. This area of town's quite new. I remembered this bus stop. There was nothing north of this or above this bus stop before. I'm referring to directions because I know the directions of this map. Kirkwall is in the middle, and then looking up to Brennan, that's north. Looking over to Tanker Nest and Gritley is to the east. To the south, you've got, funnily enough, the southern Orkney Isles with St. Margaret's and Cleet. And then over to the west, you've got Stromnest, really. That is the directions, and I do keep referring to that. If you do look on the map, so I always have the north facing when I'm drawing them, just to make things much easier to understand. Anyway, so St. Mary's. How is St. Mary's doing? Well, first of all, it doesn't look like a big town. Not surprised, it's not, funnily enough. What we're going to do is we're going to try... The town's actually laid out in not too bad formation. Only thing I would like to do is probably connect up that small road there. And then, if we have a bus stop along the bottom here, I expect the town to grow, so I'm actually going to have another one out here. Then, if we have another bus stop at the top end of town, another bus stop there, then we're going to come up this road here. We can build on the opposite side. Another one coming down here, and then probably another one there. And again, we're sort of making a circle. And then I think I might do something similar in Bury that I did in St. Margaret's Hope where I go around the bus stops in reverse, they might add in an extra two bus stops, maybe come up along the top of the town instead this time. Might not stop at all of them, let's put it that way. Might not stop at all, we might just stop at some. Okay, let's jump back into our line manager once again, and let's get our second new bus route on the go. It's quite nice that we're actually making quite a bit of expansion work. We're going to start this one off up here in St. Mary's though. I just have realized I've been naming some of my routes since M, just for shortening the route names. I realize we've got two Saint M's though, so that could be a bit of an issue. What we're going to do though is we're going to call it King's Road. We're then going to call at King Street, and then we'll call... I need to watch out here what side of the road we're calling on. So that's fine, and then we call it the Grove. That's fine. Then, coming round here, let's call it North Road, let's call at George Street, and then... How do we want to do this? We want to just stop at... Bypass that stop, or stop, might as well stop at Church Street and then Kings Road again. Yeah, that works for me, that works for me, so we're not stopping... Oh. Well, it's just one stop we're not stopping at, actually. I think we can probably get rid of King Street, to be honest. I don't really see there's not really much advantage to that. So let's come out of there. And then what I want to do is additionally add in an extra stop at this part of the time, because we're definitely growing over here. So after 14, let's call in at the New York Road. And then I suppose... 
after bus stop number 7 at the Grove, we're calling it York Road as well, which is awesome. So it's a slightly different route, and that should hopefully cover Bury a bit better. So with that route named, we are going to get the buses coming out from St Margaret's Hope. I'm going to go for Daimler's just because this route's going to be a little bit smaller in terms of distance. So I'm not expecting there to be too many financial issues and I'm expecting demand to grow very, very quickly. As we've seen earlier on, I think St Mary's to St Margaret's Hope is about the same distance from Cleet to St Margaret's Hope. So we are seeing a lot of these vehicles on the move though, but yeah, they're very empty and I can't imagine there's going to be a lot of demand down in Cleet. I do expect this route to be making a loss for some time. What I'm now going to turn my attention to is I'm going to jump back up here and we're going to have a look at our line manager and see how we're doing financially on a lot of our routes and see really where we can make any improvements. First of all, if we come over to the crude oil over in Grobster, I can see that we've got a lot of oil to move. However, do Grobster actually need it? That's the first question. Do Grobster and White all need it? Because I can move as much as I want, but that's already at 100%. That's already at 93%. It's not really going to get much better, is it? So I don't really think there's actually need to move this much oil. Essentially, we're just producing too much and that production rate needs to drop. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sell the old vehicles. There's only two old vehicles on this route. And that means that route is now modernized. What I am going to do is I'm going to update the route up to Whitehall, though, with new vehicles. And the reason for that is... We can get a little bit more capacity in there. We can fill up that remaining 11 fuel and fill up the remaining 7%. That's cost me quite a bit of money, but it is really going to be needed. Grobster, again, I don't really feel there's much justification for Grobster. We'll set the vehicle to replace, and then I don't know how quickly that is going to happen. It might happen in a few years, it might not. It's doing not too bad financially anyway, so we'll leave it as it is. Let's go ahead and look at Eddie, actually. How are the post buses doing on Eddie? I feel Eddie's grown quite a bit and we can probably alter this route slightly. Though, do we want to be a bit ambitious here? I'm going to be a bit ambitious. We're going to build the second port and we're going to bridge over to... And when I mean bridge, build a new boat route over to Egglesey. Because I think that would be quite a good idea. Maybe even get Rap Ness in the mix. Oh, this would be interesting. Okay. Yeah, let's do that, let's do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a second port in Egglesey. I'm pretty sure the bus is doing quite poor on Egglesey. It is doing very poor, losing 24k all in all. So I do think this is a really good chance. One thing I want to do... I realise I'm jumping all over the place right now. Let's go down to Long Hope and Lioness. So this bus is losing a lot of money as well. Even though we've got a lot of demands. And I believe it's probably because the bus isn't going fast enough. If we remove the Daimler, 22 miles per hour, and replace it with a Souder 2 Share, 31 miles per hour, this could make the difference. So let's go and do that. That means then that the frequency is going to be much better, and the capacity is better by, I think, 2 in total? Yeah, it is 2. Let's add an extra bus on as well, if we can afford it. I'm guessing that one of the automatic upgrades just came through. So let's apply another bus on there, and let's hope that that gets a bit more profitable. While we're down here, I'm actually going to make a few edits around this town, because we might as well. We get Line Manager up to see how out of date this is. It's very out of date. Let's have an additional bus stop over here. To be fair, I mean, just making that bus stop there is actually going to be adequate, and then if we add another one as we leave and enter town, then let's check out Line S. Line S really hasn't outgrown it's bus stops at all, actually. I think the only thing, again, we could probably do is have a bus stop as we come into the town. I think that's always a good idea. So if we jump in here, the vehicles are slowly but surely upgrading now. Let's go and have after bus stop number two. Let's call in here. And then after Highfield Road number eight, let's call in at Park Lane as well. Then additionally, one... We're actually probably going to get rid of New Street entirely, and then after bus stop number 13, we're going to call at... Not going to call it... Oh, ho, ho, ho. Let's get rid of Kingsway. And then after bus stop number 12, yes, we're going to call it 13, then we're going to call it 14. And then what's the last stop? Park Lane number 7. So after Park Lane number 7, 
coming at London Road number 89. And there we go. So that's the town much better covered now. Long Hope especially in Line S a little bit. I am expecting the upgrading to take a little bit of while and probably make an even further loss initially as the buses change. But when they do take effect, I think I really do think things will be much, much better there. Let's go back to where we were going to touch on up here in the north and have a look at how things are going in Eddie and Egglesey. I think we're just going to basically build the port exactly opposite. I think that's the best thing to do here. Again, the port is going to cost me quite a bit of money. So what I'm going to do, we've just flicked into a new financial year so I can understand why we're losing quite a bit of money. If we speed things up though, it should be profitable very, very quickly. Good thing is, because this land is so flat as well, we can probably get this harbour in it for 200,000. Again, the money though will be lost in this road going up to connect up to there. 42,000 isn't too bad, I suppose. And then if we have a small turning road there so we can have a nice bus stop at the top there. Then over in Eddie, Eddie's not grown this way too much. But if we go and rotate this around, I'm really looking forward to this route on Eddie now actually because it's going to be a point to point instead of a circle and I think that might make things a bit more profitable. Right, if we build, yeah, I would say about there, I'm just going to wait until I get a bit of finance here. Good thing is we really are making a fair amount of money now. I'm not actually having to panic take out loans, which is great. That's a lot of money though for that short road. If we go and build up to about here, and then I think we can make the last approach a little bit cheaper. 94,000, it's still better anyway than the enormous financial burden it was going to cost us. And then if we build a small road to connect over to probably here, not at 150k though. There's no way that's worth 150k. There we go, 40k. And that gives us a nice turning circle as well. What we need to do now is probably modify the route around Eddy. What I'm thinking of doing is sort of changing it into an S shape, so go from dock to dock. I think that would be the best bet. I think it's actually probably best before I modify the boats, we go and, or the buses, sorry, we get a boat route on the go, and the reason for that is just to build a bit of capacity and see how long it's going to take to do this journey, because it's quite a long journey. So with that named, I think we might need a new shipyard, unfortunately. I don't think you'll be able to provide... Nah, there's no way. I'm going to have to build another shipyard, aren't I? Let's have this one on Egglesey, I think, because that could help us out for Rapness as well when we eventually build up there. If we go into the right option and grab a shipyard and face it towards the water, there we go. Right, I think we have a new boat. We do. So interestingly now, we don't even have the 75-seater boat. We only have the 100-seater boat. And then we also have the Zurich at 125. Though interestingly, it goes slower. Is it cheaper? It's not cheaper. Interesting. Don't have much choice here. I'm just going to have to dive in for the Schaffhausen. Quite happy to do. What I think we are going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to pause and we're going to take out some more loans. So this is where I need to keep track of my pork barrels. I've got a certain spot on the map, which should be around this coast here. I can't actually see it now. There we go. These little things here. So we've got a stack of essentially 30 million and a stack of 5 million. We're going to build another stack of 5 million. So that's going to cost me 10 pork barrels in total. It's in one of these menus here. There we go. Wonderful. So let's add 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So as we can see, my money's pretty much gone up 5 million. Got the overlays off right now, but that will do the trick and that will allow me to expand this route greatly. So if we go back into the shipyard and we go and grab our passenger boat, the Schaffhausen, let's deploy this onto our Eddie to Egglesey route and let's hope that takes effect quite quickly. I'm going to put the game onto times 3 as well right now, just so that can get kicking. So the S shape that I want to create here, we really need to... Hmm. If we build a bus stop up here, it makes sense. It can come... I'm going to change that bus stop for there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come along into the middle. And then have a new bus stop there. 
Now, how are we going to end? I think we might change things here. And we're going to... I'm going to costly... Oh, that's a lot of money. 200,000. I'm going to bite the bullet, though, and we're going to have a small turning circle there. No, that's not good. Of course, I need building up piers as I'm building a road. Typical. So there we go. So that'll be my new turning circle. So this route is going to change quite a lot. Right now, with only three buses on here, I'm really not expecting too much. I do expect the biggest change to be on Egglesey. I mean, we are... I mean, 1,000. We're basically making a profit. It's... It's breaking even is what it's doing. So if we quickly jump out of the building and let's have a look at this here. So uh, I might be best scrapping this actually. I'd rather modify the entire route though. Well, this could be quite interesting. So after stop number three, we're now going to call in at Victoria Road, then the Grove, and then back to Victoria Road, back to King's Road. So we can entirely get rid of West Street now. I do not know why Victoria Road has not got another bus stop at the other side. It now does though, so it's a little less confused. Then after King's Road, we're going to get rid of bus stop number 2, the Crescent. And we're going to go from 6, we're going to go along into the middle of town. Then we're going to get rid of the drive and we're going to call along at Church Road at 7. Uh, I've muddled this up now. So after 6... Let's call at Manchester Road, Church Road, Perfect, Kingsway, London Road. Then after number 10, we're just going to loop around here. Let's get rid of number 1. Then after High Street, back up to London Road and back the way we came. And that is the new route, ladies and gentlemen. So, quite easy to see. We've gone for... It's a wonky S. If you look at it like that, it is sort of an S. So I'm not too far off that. We've got a lot of old bus stops, which I'll very quickly just delete and clean up. I suppose this does affect the property money that we're paying out every single year. Though the property itself, uh, I mean the maintenance is what, it's not going to change. It's already quite large and that's mainly because of probably train stations that we've got, even though we're not actively using them. And also harbours as well. Harbours are probably our biggest cost overall. What I am going to do now is I'm going to add in a few extra vehicles. I'm quite happy keeping the post buses actually. We're going to add three more into this route though. We should see now the frequency. It's at 107 seconds. It's not too bad. I do expect when this other boat does get ticking a lot more, I'm expecting this to really flourish. The good thing is as well, what it looks like, I mean, we just went into a new financial year, but we've only got two routes which are actually in the negative. And amazingly, the long hope to line S is much more profitable than it was. I'm not actually really surprised at that one, but it is showing some green, which is great to see. While we've got our massive amount of money, and before I do touch on Egglesey, might as well upgrade our two busy, busy routes. Or do I want to upgrade those routes? Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Egglesey, this is a mess, this place. It's our least profitable, and I'm really not surprised. I've already tried to make this work before, and it's just unfortunately failed. Good thing is now though, we can modify this route quite easily. So if we have another bus stop over here and then finally one for the harbour up there. Let's come out of building and let's now modify at least one of the ends of this route. So let's get rid of bus stop number 10 at Albert Road. After bus stop number 9, the green. There's two bus stops near each other, one called the Grove, one called the Green, which isn't confusing at all. We'll go up to Grange Road, around at South Street and back into Grange Road. That's perfect. What I want to do now as well is add in a brand new bus stop at... We're going to move Kingsway slightly. Kingsway is going to come down here. Then we're going to add in another bus stop along here as well. So this means now Park Road. We are serving just a slightly different part of the town. So after bus stop number 3, we're going to call at York Road. Then we're going to call at High Street. And we're going to get rid of Kingsway entirely. So that small change could make a massive difference. Again, I don't think it will though until we get a bit of demand over at our new Egglesey East Ferry Terminal. So just having a look at things, the Brunian to Soren route is actually doing really poor. It is currently at only 10k profit. It is in the profit. The dock runner is not doing very well either. 
it's at 31,000. So I'm really starting to think now because, and you can see around the town, there's really not that much demand. Are just everyone using cars? Everyone pretty much is using a car now, which makes me think that the train is probably nearing its income. And I think we might touch on that next episode then. I think we're gonna we're gonna put I've decided we're gonna put a train in in the next episode. I also realise as well that the bus really hasn't there's a lot of CERN which really isn't covered, it's not been updated too much, so I'm not really expecting it to be doing that great all in all. Looks like we've got quite a few unlocks here. We've got the rail bus, that could be an interesting one. And we've also got two new ships, both look like cargo ships of the same size and maybe just carry slightly different things. Let's have a look at that rail bus very quickly and see if that's a viable option. I'm pretty sure it's a multi-unit, but we can stack many of these together. And they've got a very small running cost. It doesn't go very fast, but it goes double the speed of the fastest bus. So it definitely might be an option, which we'll explore in the next episode. So that brings us to the end of the episode. I hope you did enjoy it. 1950, I want to bring your attention to the financial sheets here. We did well. We made 762,000 in that year. I'm really happy about that. That would probably be about a full loan interest if we had all 30 million out. So glad we've got rid of the loan because... It was just a burden, and I keep mentioning it, but I'm so glad I've made that change. Now we're really on the upward spiral. We are at this stage now. We're bringing in a train. I do think we can break the million mark, maybe in the next episode. And now we're into 1950 as well. We've got a lot of good unlocks, well, a lot of good capacity. So the game really changes now. It goes from that micromanagement that we are trying earlier on, now into a bit more of expansion and also trying to really meet the different population needs. As we can see in the background, quite a lot of change has happened in this episode, mainly thanks to the Highway Act. We can see in these transitions that we have built quite a lot of roads, it's safe to say, but this is really good and it really sets a good blueprint for the future. But that is all for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. Please leave a like rating and subscribe if you are new around here. Check out the description below where there's links to my Twitter, my Discord and my Patreon. Any support you can show me on any of those would be greatly appreciated. Again, a massive thanks to Nicole H for supporting me over on Patreon. Go ahead and leave me some more comments, some more feedback, and I'll try and integrate it into future episodes. And that's all, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Bigfoot, and I'm out.